All right, so check out that view. This is my view out the window right now. Actually, I'm on the balcony. So I'll just show you guys this. The kids are somewhere down here at the pool. My sons, Angst and Falcon, they're out here at the pool having fun. This is kind of what it looks like here. I'm here. Lola's over there. And uh, in case you're wondering where we are, <laughs> this is uh, Big Cedar Lodge. We're in the Ozarks. We're in Wisconsin. We're in the Branson area. Missouri. Oh, I'm sorry. Missouri, Lola. Lola corrected me. It's Missouri. <laughs> okay, Missouri, Ozarks. We're very close to Arkansas. We're kind of like just right over the border into Missouri. And that's the Ozarks Mountain that I was showing you. I'll show you guys that again. So I wanted to do a uh, quick, we're going to keep this short, do a quick broadcast. We're on vacation, but I have made a commitment to doing these live broadcasts every day. So um, I just wanted to do that. I'm live. You don't see it there? All right, let me check this out. Um, this is the thing that I do wrong every single time. I do not make it public. Lola is telling me it's not public, so I keep forgetting to make it public. You know, that's like a big, big thing that I keep doing wrong. So there you go. It should be, it should be there now, Lola. Okay, she's giving me the thumbs up. It's going. We are public. We are live. One more time, I'll show you this. There we go. Anyone who's just jumping in now. Lola, can you see the awesomeness of the Ozarks? There you go, the Ozarks. There's Lola Strange over there in the corner. This is kind of like the balcony of our room. Um, we are at Big Cedar, which is in Wisconsin. It's just over the border from Arkansas. We're in kind of like the, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know why I said Wisconsin again, Missouri. <laughs> Missouri. We're just over the border from Arkansas in Missouri, and um, we're close to Branson, Missouri. And this place that we're staying right now is called Big Cedar, if you want to look it up. So it's Big Cedar, Branson, Missouri. And what I wanted to talk to you guys about today is basically this here. I'm going to hold that up. And it is Republicans introduce new gun carry legislation in wake of Alexandria attack. So basically, after that attack that we had, um, with a guy that was, you know, basically a liberal guy that was all juiced up and uh, ready to do damage to Republicans based on all the, the vitriol that we've been getting from the left. Folks like Kathy Griffith, um, Kathy Griffin, Madonna, Sarah Silverman, all those guys that want revolution, and want people to go out there and fight back and attack in the wake of Trump becoming president, we've got a guy out there who went out and did some serious damage. You know, fortunately, he didn't kill anyone. He did wind up dead himself. And so that whole thing has now, there's been several laws, uh, laws or bills, I should say, introduced that folks are going to try to push through. If you've ever seen that, um, that thing on how, you know, how a bill becomes, how something becomes a bill up on Capitol Hill, you know, that I'm just a bill up on Capitol Hill. That's like one of those after school things where they try to explain to you how things become, like how bills become laws. Not easy, not an easy thing to do. So people are introducing bills. There was a bill introduced talking about that that would allow the congressman to carry anywhere in the US that they wanted to. That's kind of like a special privilege in my opinion. Now this sounds a little bit more reasonable. I'm just gonna read the article to you guys real quick. It says Republican Congressman Thomas uh, Massey, Republican from Kentucky, introduced a bill on Thursday that would require Washington DC to honor valid gun carry permits from other states. Rep Massey said the DC Personal Protection Reciprocity Act was a direct reaction to last week's attack on a Republican Congressman at a base baseball field in Alexandria, Virginia, which left four injured. After the horrific shooting at the Republican congressional baseball practice, there will likely be calls for special privileges to protect Republicans 
Rep. Massey said in a statement, our reaction should instead be to protect the right of all citizens guaranteed in the Constitution. The right to self-defense, I do not want to extend a special privilege to politicians because the right to keep and bear arms is not a privilege, it is a God-given right protected by our Constitution. So there's more of this. This particular article I'm reading is on freebeacon.com. I did put a link in this video if anyone wants to see it. And, um, you know, uh, it says, Massey goes on to say, if they were not for Capitol Police Special Agents Crystal Greiner, David Bailey, who were only on duty at the baseball practice due to the presence of Rep. Steve Scalise, who was injured in the attack, it would have likely been a far, a far worse outcome. Okay, so, you know, basically he's going on here and uh, he's talking about how uh, one of the Republican um, lawmakers, Barry Laudermilk, said that his staff, usually they have, they have um, licenses to carry weapons and they usually would have had weapons on them, except that um, this is like kind of a weird thing. So let's say this, this uh, Laudermilk is from Georgia and he has, or his staff and him, they have the concealed carry permit and they have guns that they keep on them usually, right? Now the problem would be in Virginia that would reciprocate. Remember Virginia wanted to take away that reciprocation? Well, we all made noise about it and that was rescinded. So it does reciprocate. Like my Florida reciprocates to Virginia, Georgia, probably the same thing. Now, so you're saying, well, if those guys were in Virginia, why didn't they have that? Well, because mostly their, off their offices are in D.C., and D.C. does not allow that. So it all becomes really, really complicated, right? You have to, like, if you're in D.C., you can't carry. When you go to Virginia, you can, but when you go back, if you forget, now you're carrying illegally. It can create all these problems that we really shouldn't have, and that's why he's introducing this bill to kind of, like, uh, solve that situation. And he's saying that some other bills were introduced where only Congress, only the, 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 the congressmen themselves would have that ability. And you know what? That's something that we really don't need in America. We already have enough of that. And those things went into to play in the past. So for example, congressmen have better health care than we do. You never hear them complaining about their health care because it's freaking awesome. But the stuff that they pass for us is crap because they don't have it. And I think we have to stop that. They should have what we have. If these are rights for for us, it should be rights for us. They shouldn't have a special right. If they if something gets so bad that they realize that they've got to give themselves this right, they should give it to us first and all of us. We should all get it as American citizens, right? That's the way it should go. Now, this is a little different. What he's saying is that, yes, as American citizens, we should all have the right that if we have a legal carry permit in our state, we should be able to go to D.C. and that permit reciprocates to D.C. So folks who are carrying can be will be able to carry in D.C. and in a situation like this and other situations that would come up, realizing that D.C. is one of the place, that places that terrorists, domestic and foreign, would like to go after because even though it's a small place, it means a lot to us as Americans because it's the capital of our country, of our nation, right? So this is why he wants to do that. And uh, I think it's a good idea. We know that people in D.C. had uh, problems for a while getting uh, permits to carry. There were several uh, people that actually had to sue for that right. And I think eventually it went through all the way up to the Supreme Court. And um, it's maybe a little bit easier now. I would have to speak to someone. If you're from D.C. out there, you can leave comments here and let us know how it is. Is it, it has it gotten easier for you to get a carry permit in DC? So, and then Lola is going to tell me if you've got comments and stuff like that, definitely leave them here. Lola will tell me. I will come back and answer all those things uh, when I can. So this this I think is a, is a step in the right direction. I know that there's been other bills introduced to make concealed carry permits from one state legal in all states and uh perhaps we should do that as well i'm not i'm not opposed to this i think this would be good we need things like this definitely all the congressmen from around the country who live in states where they can um easily reasonably get concealed carry permits then would be able to carry legally in dc and that would probably reciprocate to other places including virginia 
So that would be a good thing for them. But for all of us, no matter where we are, whether we're in D.C., whether we're in Florida, where I'm from, wherever you're from, if we're in this beautiful state of Missouri, you will, if you have a, a permit that allows you to legally carry a concealed firearm, you can take that permit to wherever you want to go in the rest of America and also have that right to defend yourself, right? That should be, we, perhaps we need to do more things to make people aware of this and do more things to um, encourage congressmen out there to support this and pass it. I think the time is now, we're at a very precarious time in our politics where we do have the ability and the control and enough of a majority to get these things to go through. But there's so much that folks want to get to get through that sometimes the uh, the gun things would get lost. And, you know, we all want to see suppressors come off the NFA and we want to see machine guns and all that stuff. But I've heard a lot of guys say that reciprocity for all 50 states right now, we got 50 unless we get Puerto Rico, then that might be like, you know, the 51st. And guess what? If, if Puerto Rico does become a, I'm not saying I want it to be. But if it does become the 51st, I would like, if I go to Puerto Rico on vacation, to be able to declare my firearm, carry it over there, and then legally carry it concealed and be safe and enjoy the beauty of Puerto Rico. Maybe that's how, you know, we get Puerto Rico back to a beautiful, uh, thriving place. But there's lots of other beautiful states in the Union that we all would all love to be able to go to and have our right to defend ourselves reciprocate to those states. So this is basically what I wanted to talk about. Um, let me go through here and um, look at some other stuff. So I'm going to talk about this other uh, representative, Barry Loudermilk, Republican Georgia, who was at the baseball field when the attack took place but survived unscathed, told a group of reporters on Wednesday that while the Capitol Police acted in a heroic way to stop the shooter, Things needed to change. He said if the attack had happened back in his home state of Georgia, he or his staff may have been armed and able to help stop the attack themselves. There are several things to look at, Rep. Loudermilk said. If this happened in Georgia, he wouldn't have gotten too far. I had a staff member who was in his car, maybe 20 yards behind the shooter. Back in Georgia, he carries a 9mm in his car. I carry a weapon. He had a clear shot at him. But here, we're not allowed to carry any weapons here. We aren't any more special than anybody else, but we're targets. This is exactly why there's a lot of fear down the halls at this point. So there's a couple of things there that we should unpack from that, that he's saying that if he was back in his home state, they would have had something. And uh, I kind of agree with that, except that if that guy had that gun in his car and not on him, at the time, then it's totally useless if he's if he would have been out there on the field. Now, if he was in his car doing support work, and then he saw this thing going on and it was there, sure, he would have access to it. And this is why we should all carry on us at all times. So I just, I didn't want to miss that opportunity. I'm sure there's some folks out there that are watching this uh, live and you're like, yeah, what is that going to do you in the car or in your purse or something like that if it's not on your person? Well, yeah, you're right. It, it wouldn't really do much. But they are, overall, they are making a good point that, you know, we, sh we, should have, we should have this right. And then not, obviously not everyone would do it, but I think that there's a lot of good guys out there that would do it. And as you see in these situations, there's not enough cops. So unless in America we're just going to hire half the people to, you know, onto the police forces, which I don't think is a good idea because... If we do that and we just hire a lot of people, it doesn't mean that they're going to get good training. And if we spend the money getting good training, we're not going to have as many people, which, you, you know, I think I would rather have that, where you have better trained people but not as many people. And then also, you're the first responder, you personally. So if you've got 100 people there and maybe, you know, 10 or 20 of those guys are gun guys, they carry, they've done training, and they're armed at that time, you've got a, a basically a good response unit to do something about it. I won't deny that we all need more training, we all need better training, but first we have to get over all these different laws that exist in America that makes it so difficult for people to know where can you carry, when can you carry, what can you carry, 
what do you do in these kinds of situations? We need to get together better on this and first start by making the laws better, making the laws easier, more accessible. You know, this is a right, it's not, not just a civil right, it's a human right, that something that we should all have. And then when we get over that, then we can focus on the part where we do, where we spend our money um, on training. Like Robert Butler, who was on the show, he said that we need to do uh, more medical training. I agree with him on that because that's the thing that's more, more likely to come up, not something that has, that's related to a gunshot wound. You can have all kinds of different accidents, car accidents, accidents at work where someone gets injured and they're bleeding out. And if you have this kind of training, you can help save that person's life, maybe save your own life, save the life of someone that you really uh, care about. And then after that, we need to do some training where we talk about things that have been coming up on the news lately, like guys who are legally licensed to carry but wind up getting shot to death by police officers. Yeah, maybe we can do something about that and um, create a dialogue between law enforcement and other civilians, because they're civilians too, but the rest of the public, where we all realize how to deal with each other. So they realize, they, they come more to grips with how to deal with us, because there's a lot of those guys who don't believe in guns, don't feel comfortable with guns, don't feel comfortable with us having guns. I was in that situation where I came across uh, a member of law enforcement that didn't feel comfortable with me being legally licensed to carry a firearm when he decided that he wanted to um, pull me over and give me a hard time. So if we create that dialogue and we have that conversation with these guys, they can better understand us, we can better understand them and what to do and how we stay alive and how they stay safe. But we need to do this. This is America, it's 2017. We have so much technology, so much better access to education, training, understanding. Why aren't we doing this stuff? That's, that's what I think about this. I definitely support this on principle. Uh, hopefully I, it would go through, hopefully we don't get a lot of crap added to it as if you ever, um, if you ever really look into what it takes for a bill to become law, lots of crap gets added to those things along the way. So, you know, we wouldn't want that, but I think that this is something good. We probably need to push it further and get reciprocity for the entire country, you know, and dare I dream one day the whole world. We all live on this planet as human beings, and we're all free to, to practice our religion and our creeds and go about our lives. But there are some individuals, it's become a huge problem in the world today, where there's individuals that, because of their religious beliefs, they basically, this is how people have become uh, terrorists, because of their re religious beliefs, they believe they have to bend the rest of the world to their will that they have to put the sword to our neck and either convert us or kill us. And that's not freedom. That's not what I want. I don't think that's what you want. So ultimately, the, uh, the utopia, the dream for me would be that the whole world is like this and good guys can travel all, all over the world and be sheepdogs and help protect people all over the world. But I don't know if we'll ever get that, but I think that we are, it's capable, it's within, it's... Um, it's more than just dreaming to think that we could have that in America. I think it's possible. Regardless of what you believe uh, politically and all that kind of stuff, I think if you really look into this, you'll understand that the right to defend yourself is the right that gives, that's the gateway to all the other rights that you want, all the other freedom that you want. You have to be able to defend yourself. If you're, um, if you're, if you're gay, transgender, if uh, you practice a certain religion that people don't understand, if, if what you do, if your lifestyle is something that folks out there feel uncomfortable with and are afraid of and for whatever reason choose to attack you, I think if you think about it, you would see that the ability to defend yourself protects you in those instances. So you just don't wind up a story on the news. So that by, by the time the police show up, you're just not a report that they're making. And this is why it's important for all races, religions, creeds, genders. This is an important thing, the Second Amendment, the right to defend yourself. Very important. So this is a good bill that um, these guys are talking about here. I'd like to see that go in, but I'd like to see other things. 
Lola, are there, are there any comments uh, coming across right now that I should know about? I know we've definitely got some viewers out there. I want to shout out to everyone. I want to encourage you guys to like this video, share it, let people know that we're doing this. You know, help us uh, build up a following here. And uh, we'll definitely keep doing this and talk about stuff that you guys want to know about. Any comments? To know who you are? Yeah. So Tony, so Tony um, who's watching, says that he, he would like to see some kind of system go into place that when you have a CCW, there's some way of uh, notifying law enforcement that you are a good guy. Um, yeah, I think we have to have something like that. You know what I worry about, though? Um, I I'm not worried about like them having the ability to see this data like through either smartphones that they have on them or from their patrol units. Or something. I'm not worried about that because doing this stuff, you've got to go through background checks and fingerprinting and all that. So... You know, there's a database being established uh, on your behalf, so I'm good with that. One of the things I worry about that I've seen lately, and I think, Lola, you've seen this too, is that there's folks that are making like a badge. So you get your CCW, and then you get some kind of badge that looks like, it looks a lot to me like an official law enforcement badge, but it really isn't. And then, so people are getting that. I don't really know what that means. You guys, if I, I don't have one, I wouldn't get one, and I don't think it's a good idea because... You know, this badge, what is that going to do? It doesn't have any authority behind it. And I think it gets confusing, and it's kind of like borderline uh, impersonating a police officer. So I, I, I'm not a fan of that, but I think I am a fan of there being some other way that people don't fake. And that's the problem with a badge, right? People can fake badges. Lola had an incident when we lived in New York that there was a guy who either he was a police officer or he was faking. I can't remember right now. I think he was faking that he was a police officer. And she was driving and something happened. This guy was like in road rage and faking that he was a cop. I mean, there's lots of things like that going on. So I definitely don't want to create a system that people fake it, that they're good guys. But we do have the technology that at least police officers, when they're dealing with you, when they're talking to you, something says, hey, this guy's a good guy. We know who he is. We know where he lives. We know that he's had some kind of training. We know that he's armed and he's a good guy. And then that can, because that allows them to go ahead and do their job, which their job is to serve and protect us against the bad guys. The people out there that are robbing and harming people, that's really what they're supposed to be out there doing. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff I think that we have police doing, and we could, we could have this discussion for a long time, but I think that's the basic thing that, the basic reason why we have police officers in our society, and we have to figure out a way that we do, I, that we are able to safely identify ourselves to them without them going into panic mode. Because it's happened a few times. This incident recently with Philando Castillo, I don't believe is the first time that it's happened. Um, it happened with me, but obviously I survived that. It, I just wound up losing some time and, and all that kind of stuff and being uncomfortable for some period of time, that's no big deal when you consider that this guy lost his life. I don't really want to see this happening again and again in, in our society. So any other comments, Lola? Um, uh, Al, Al is saying that he is uh, the um, We have a comment from Al coming in. I'm gonna show you guys while Lola's trying to, for people who are just joining, check that out, check out that view. We're in the Ozarks, that's awesome. This is, this is like, this is what's downstairs from our lodge. There's Lola over there. She's far, she's far over there <laughs> telling me what's going on. Okay, so this is Al talking. What? I don't know. Um, so Al, I guess, is making like a uh, facetious comment that with all the, like he's worried about all the new gun rights, so he wants to open carry a sword or a katana or something like that. Um, <laughs> okay, I understand that. You know, that might be really good in the zombie apocalypse. You know, and swords obviously give you a little bit of distance, like they give you a little bit of reach, but I prefer, I prefer um, handguns. 
and rifles and stuff like that for self-defense. We just have to, um, you know, we have to figure out a way to be able to do this and do it safely. And without, I don't know if, if we can say like zero people getting hurt. I don't think we want anyone to get hurt at all. We do want zero, but that's just an impossibility with all the millions, hundreds of millions of people that exist in America for someone not to get hurt. But we want to really, really minimize that. And even if it does wind up in a situation where there's some kind of misunderstanding, I don't think there's a good reason to release seven rounds on someone inside of a vehicle with a woman and a, ch and a four-year-old child in it. You know, we've, we've, got to, we've got to figure out a better way to do all the things that we're doing. We've just got to come up with a better system. I'm not saying that I have the answers, but we have to try to come up with a better way to do this. Um, any other comments, things you wanted to focus on? Okay, so, and if you notice, I'm, I'm rocking my brown owls hat today. There we go. I figured I'd give brown owls some love. I want to give some, uh, definitely a shout out to Big Daddy Guns. This is remote. We're not in the Big, Big Daddy Guns studio right now. This is remote, but um, they are helping us out by giving us access to that studio on the broadband and the space and the electricity and stuff like that. They're covering that. And um, the other folks that are helping us to be able to do that are the people that sponsor the channel. That's uh, Safety Harbor Firearms, Andrews Custom, and Rand CLP, all good folks that sponsor and support what I'm doing. I want to thank them for that. And really, I want to give big thanks and big shout out to everyone that's a Patreon of the Hank Strain situation. If you're not, you know, please consider helping support us. We are Patreon slash Hank Strange. We've got like, how many, like 30 guys right now, about 30 folks out there that are helping us out every month. And we put that money towards paying for data and buying things like recently we just bought a microphone to be able to do this kind of stuff. Um, you know, we really need that support and we appreciate all the people out there that give us that support. So I think I've probably been going for like about half an hour now. I want to thank everyone that's watching this. And uh, I hope everyone stays safe out there. And this is summertime. Lots of folks on their vacations. Not just me, but Lola and I are on our vacations. And before I go, I'm going to give you guys one last look here at, check it out there. If you can see the pool, I don't know if you can see. My son Angst is there in the pool. He's swimming. He, ran, oh, he just came up. I don't know if you can see him. All right. <laughs> so that's that. And I'm like sitting here in my, in my, Lola says I should maybe let you guys see. Let's check it out. R2D2 on the, R2D2 on my sweatpants. Doing the sweatpants thing. <laughs> all right. I'm going to go have some fun, hang out with the family, go check out the mountains and all the other cool stuff out here. So. Thanks for watching. I'm Hank Strange. Stay safe out there. Peace.